Hey gang, uh, part two, two of the Traveler's Notebooks. If you came over here from Julie's blog, welcome. I hope you'll subscribe. And um, let me tell you first that the links are, any links I mentioned will be under the video. If you're watching on YouTube, you click the show more button and there'll be links there. Anything I mention. And while you're there, hit the I like this. So let's get to it. This is just about uh, listing, really. And I recently had this little epiphany. And listing seemed a little bit like a chore to me. And um, I found the Reset Girls uh, YouTube channel and website. She's a planner. One of those people who um, decorates their planners and really journals in their planner. And um, she also ha generates a list of prompts for listing. And uh, I recently began taking a, a writing class and I have to admit that it's something just sort of clicked in my head when the teacher said it's a brain dump listing is a brain dump so i was like oh man that didn't just didn't hit me before so anyway i um am sort of into this now and i like this format this two to one format uh, for this and i'm just going to show you some ways that i go in and you know how i like to interrupt the page before I write or journal. Um, I just do. It's just, it's A, it's fun. B, it's fun. C, it breaks up the white page. It's just fun. And um, the things I'm using are these, I don't know why I got all this stuff, but it, for some reason I was just totally into buying this weird, it's not weird, it's really quite beautiful these things and um, I thought I would show you some ways to take them puddle jumping as I'm referring to it. So let's get started. By the way, I'm going to voice over the rest of this. There's a ton of construction noise outside today. So let's get puddle jumping. So I'm just gathering up some supplies. Uh, just got an old drawing here that I'm going to tear and use the top of as a stencil. I'll probably use the side. I love that you use torn edge stencils. Got some stamps going, hand carved, and some that are not. Some distress inks. Gesso, of course, and a palette knife. I also have over there some, what are those things called? paint daubers they're not I'll link them below I don't use them the stains the distress stains I, I really like them and uh, I think I use them in, with a stencil and just some odds and ends of papers that uh, caught my eye don't know that I'll use it all but we'll keep it in this kit a stencil a Carolyn Doobie stencil and I uh, pulled a pigment ink pad, Avriel, that's a, like a red, poppy red maybe, because I thought that bird could be thinking, ah, oh, now I know, it's a list. A list is a good thing, yay. <laughs> so it's an old hand carved stamp of mine. That's a, a new stamp I got. I think it might be a Tim Holtz. Life doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful. And I'll do a little bit of, uh, put out some distress ink onto my craft mat, give it a spritz and just drag pieces of paper through it. Puddle jumping, yeah. I really love doing that. It, you just you have no idea what you're going to come up with, and um, and those foil pieces are really fun because the distressed ink won't stick to the foil, so you have this grungy looking thing with sparkly foil. Uh, this piece I started really 
I, I took some twists and turns here. That was kind of fun. I, uh, I realized that the Distress ink was wet and that I could throw some embossing powder on it. Now, the first time I did this, the, it was kind of watery wet, so some of the Distress uh, embossing powders blew away. So I did it again direct to paper with that uh, Evergreen Bow, I think and then layered on some more of the Distress ink and it really gave me this bumpy, highly textured feeling thing uh, uh, area and that was kind of fun. And I just really liked grunging up this like really pristine piece of paper and I'll go ahead and, and write on this at some point too. I did I did get some of that uh, embossing powder on my ink pad so I took a post-it note or sticky thing of any kind and just lifted it off using that and now I'm just deciding where to put that particular piece how to attach it where to attach it in this book I have to tell you that I'm not nuts about this book it's the paper's pretty thin I would recommend using thicker paper I'm going ahead and reinforcing some of this paper and I'm also right here just using a what are those things called those um, dusters that will pick up any of that embossing powder because I'd really rather not get that in my pockets and now just tamping that stamp into some a distress ink pad giving it a spritz off camera just some water about maybe six inches away from the stamp and so it's lightly dampened and then stamping off it just blurs things a little bit this is the list from the reset girl I put it in a shoe box sprayed it with some spray ink back with another piece of I think that's from a scrapbook and just revising that so I am documenting the real story is how I put that I have a little trouble putting that down <laughs> got, got a little crazy there <laughs> I was working really quickly so I could I'd love to work really quickly and intuitively especially on this kind of thing because ideas just occur to me and sometimes uh, my brain is moving faster than my hands. Here's the edge of that and then I just uh, both the notebook edge and ah oh, man I love using this uh, torn paper stencils. Here's that Carolyn Doobie stencil again. I lifted it flipped it over so it's just pattern and that distress stain which I'm growing very fond of. I'll have to go back up to Tuesday morning and see if they have more colors. I That stuff's great. Just uh, flipping over and and cleaning off that stencil to leave a little bit on another page. This is a piece of paper that's just been hanging around overspray uh, don't really know what it where it came from but it's nice so I'm I'm just gluing it in there and by the way I'm using that uh, I like let me see it's called Tombow permanent adhesive stamp runner stamp runner I like that I like any of the tape runners by Tombow they're very convenient, a little pricey to use maybe, but you can get the refills and they're super convenient if you're not uh, painting over something. If you're painting over something, I'd go with uh, gel medium or any kind of wet glue. Just uh, turning rather than cutting that off, just turning that end of the paper over there starting to think about what's next and grab some 
uh, Dina Wakely gesso only because I don't know if there's a huge difference. I just really like that squeeze bottle. It came in on one of the Simon Says stamp kits. And I'm I'm using that as a glue as well and just um, going right over that pretty pink uh, I think it's Project Life card. And uh, getting totally covered with gesso in a way that I am very familiar with. And uh, decide to write why I like to list after all at the top of this page. I like writing into wet gesso. You should you should give that a try. I would just just use a pencil. It won't certainly won't wreck your pencil. And this is a stamp set for another one from Tim Holtz. I'll link it down below. It's I think it's called Biddy Grunge or something like that. And I really love this. It just adds some neat background textures and patterns and um, pretty much a, a, a no-brainer for me to get this one set. Uh, I like it. I can use it on, um, I think these rubber stamps work very much better on um, grungy surfaces, gessoed surfaces, than do the clear stamps, although you can certainly use those. But I do like the rubber stamps. And I can use them with my stamp mat, uh, my stamp blocks, uh, hand carved hedgehog there. Just putting some of those marching along the page. A little flip through here. Oh yeah, I decided to put some tape. Nothing seems complete without washi tape. Just putting some tape to tape down that page. So I really enjoy working like this. I gotta tell you guys, it's not necessarily the only way I work in my journal, but it's been a lot lately. I've been doing a lot of writing, um, and uh, it's so nice to just sit down and play, first of all. But then to come to a place where you can write, and when you open the book to write, there's something cool there. It might be a prompt. It might prompt you in some way or another. It might just be decoration. In any way, both sessions are fun, both the decorating part, and the messy part, and then the more thoughtful. Oops, Jessa wasn't quite dry. Um, the more thoughtful writing part. So here's a couple of books. I know I have a couple more floating around, but I uh, can't find them at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thumbs up if you did. Talk to you soon. Bye now.